Hello, and welcome to today's Indian Country Digital Trainers digital session on learning how to grow your digital skills. Today, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Yana Allen. I'm the Director of Civic Engagement and Special Projects at NCAI. And I'm pleased to welcome today our Indian Country Digital Trainer, Penny Gage. Penny comes to us from Anchorage, Alaska, and she works as an economic development specia specialist at the University of Alaska Center for Economic Development, supporting economic growth and diversity across the state. Penny, take it away. Thanks, Yana. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's workshop, Get Your Local Business on Google Search and Maps. Grow with Google helps people grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free tools, training, and events. In today's workshop, you'll learn how to set up, verify, and manage your business profile on Google using a free tool called Google My Business. Google My Business helps local businesses be found and manage their business information on Google search and maps. For any nonprofits or tribal governments here today, this tool also works for you. Organizations that see local customers or clients face-to-face -face in a store or where you uh, visit a customer's location can benefit from having a Google business profile. Once you create and claim your business profile, you can manage your information as it appears across Google search and maps. This helps potential customers find important information, including phone numbers, hours of operation, and driving directions. So let's get started. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Penny Gage. My Tlingit name is Kwasia. My mother's family is Tlingit from Southeast Alaska. I grew up in Sitka, where the red star is on that outline map of Alaska. I'm a member of the Sitka tribe of Alaska. I currently live in Anchorage, uh, the largest city in Alaska, and I work at the University of Alaska Center for Economic Development. I'm here today because I am an Indian country digital trainer. I'm one of eight trainers nationwide who were trained in early 2020 at the Google headquarters in California through a partnership between Google and NCAI. We were selected through a competitive application process to be trained in Grow With Google tools for job seekers, small businesses, and those who want to expand their digital skills. And now I provide these trainings on Google products all across the state of Alaska, and of course, virtually these days. Today's workshop will be divided into five sections. First, I'll explain what a business profile is on Google, what it includes and where it appears. Then we'll review the steps to creating and verifying your free Google business profile. Next, we'll discuss how to manage your business information located on Google My Business dashboard. Then we'll take a tour of Google My Business and everything you can do with your profile. And finally, we'll wrap up with a quick recap and I'll suggest some resources to help you learn more. Now, I want you to think about where your business or organization shows up online. Perhaps you have a website, social media accounts, or a blog. How do your customers or clients find you? Google is the most popular search engine in the world. Chances are they're probably going to google.com to search for something that will lead them to you. It's important to think about how and where you show up online, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, when people might not be able to visit your location in person. Your online presence is the front door for your business or your organization, and it's often the first place that people interact with you. So making sure you show up on Google with a business profile, which is what we're gonna talk about today, is key. Let's take a look at this two minute video that introduces the Google business profile. My name is Vince. This is my shop. I opened Village Tailor and Cleaners in 1977. I arrived in New York four years earlier from Italy. It was me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. My mother taught me how to sew. When I opened the shop, the first person I hired was my mother. 
This is Bruno, the store mascot. My little advertisement. As a business owner, you're always thinking, how can you do better? I noticed that customers come in with the clothes in one hand and the phone on the other, always looking up information. So I said to myself, we have to put this store online. Google lets me decide how the shop shows up. I pick photos, I can post special hours, anything. I made this website in 10 minutes using the website builder. And I'm not kidding. Now people walk in and I'm always asking, how did you find us? They used to say, I saw Bruno, so I came in. Now they say, Google. Believe it or not, we're up 30% this year. We're doing enough business, I had to hire more tailors and get some new machines. I've got three shops going, and my son Vincent Jr. is running one of them, the village cobbler next door. I'm in an old-fashioned profession, I work with my hands. I hadn't thought much about putting the business online. Now, I couldn't be happier. Village tailor, 40 years and going strong. doesn't love a business that also has a dog mascot. Okay, so what is a business profile on Google? A business profile is free and allows your business information to appear correctly on Google search and maps. You'll use a tool called Google My Business to create and manage your business profile. And within the dashboard of Google My Business, you can update your address, phone number, website, hours that you're open, plus answer customer reviews and more to help customers find and connect with your business. Business profiles on Google can only be created for businesses that have either a physical location that customers visit or that travel to visit customers where they are. The general rule is that a business must make in-person contact with customers during its stated hours. Ineligible businesses include online-only stores, booths at farmers markets or craft fairs, food trucks that appear at different locations on different days, or something like a fitness class where instructors teach at different places every day. Although seasonal businesses, like an ice skating rink that's only open in the winter months, something I'm familiar with here in Alaska, are eligible as long as they display permanent signage at the location year round. Something that's pretty cool is that if your business hasn't yet opened, but you plan on opening soon, you can still create a business profile and let your community know that you'll be opening soon. You can set your future opening date, engage with your customers, and announce when and where you'll be open for business. To do this, you'll create your business profile and select the verify later option. Then you'll set your future opening date before you verify your business. That way you'll prevent your business from falsely appearing on Google as open. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a Google business profile. This is how it would look when viewed on a mobile phone. Perhaps this looks familiar to you. When a shopper discovers your profile, they'll see information about your business, like your address, phone number, contact information, hours of operation, and more including photos and videos, which help customers get a look at your store and your products, customer reviews, which allow people to see what others say about your business, and quick links, which offer easy access to messaging, your website, and more. Here's an example of a Google business profile for a cafe in my hometown of Sitka that is native owned. You can see toward the top that they're not doing delivery right now, but they are doing takeout. It's important to make sure that your information is updated in the pandemic so that customers know what to expect. There are several features in the business profile that allow you to do that. On this slide, you can see what a Google business profile looks like when it's displayed on a desktop computer in the red rectangle. Creating a business profile allows you to edit the information that Google displays, so your business details are up to date and consistent across search and maps. Creating a business profile won't guarantee that your organization or business will appear in the search results, 
and help. Your Google business profile will also ensure that you show up on Google Maps. Appearing on Google Maps is important because people visit 1.5 billion destinations every month related to their Google searches. And people are searching locally. There are billions of local searches made monthly and more than 30% of all mobile searches are related to location. Business profiles work on all devices, so potential customers can find you no matter how they get online. All right, let's talk about creating a business profile on Google. To get started, visit google.com slash business. Click the sign in button in the top right to sign in to your Google account. To use any of the tools I'm talking about today, you need to be signed into your Google account. This provides a single sign in that lets you access all the connected Google products. For example, if you sign into your Gmail, which is a Google account, you don't need to sign in again to access your calendar, Google Docs, Google Slides, they're all connected. If you don't have a Google account, you can set one up for free. You can choose to get a new Gmail address, or you can use another email address you already have to register for a Google account by visiting accounts.google.com slash sign up. If your business or employer uses Google Workspace, which was formerly called G Suite, you may have an email address that doesn't look like Gmail. It doesn't end in gmail.com, but it's still a Google account. If you aren't sure, check with your team at work. This Google account that you use to set up your business profile should be one with an email address that you check regularly, and ideally it's your business email address. Google will communicate with you about your business profile through that email address. The email address used to verify your account will not be visible to customers. Once you begin typing your business name, a drop-down list may appear. If you see a list of businesses, scan the results for yours. It might already be there. Earlier, we looked at a video about village tailor and cleaners. As you saw in the video, the owner opened up a second shop, which was being managed by his son. We're gonna walk through the steps that that son would take to set up a business profile. If your business name does appear, you'll click on it. This skips you ahead one step. If that's the case, you won't enter business details. You'll immediately be asked to confirm your business. Don't worry if you wanna make changes to your information. I'll show you how to do that within Google My Business after you've been verified. If you type in your business name and it doesn't appear in the list or you don't see any options listed, just click add your business to Google. Type in or confirm your business name and make sure it's spelled correctly. Next, you'll need to select a category for your business. Start by thinking of a category you'd like to use, then type in a few letters to see what options appear below. You have to choose an existing category. You can't edit or create them. But it's okay if you can't find the perfect category. Just choose something close. You'll get more specific when you fill out your business details later. If your business fits into multiple categories, start with the main category. After your business profile is updated, you can add in a few additional categories. When you're done, click Next. Then you'll be asked to choose whether or not your business has a physical location that customers visit. Unfortunately, you cannot use a PO box as the business address for a Google business profile. It has to be a physical location that folks can visit since it links to Google Maps. Many local service area businesses operate out of private homes. If you have a service area business and you see your customers face to face, but at the customer's location or a common area such as a coffee shop, you can hide your home address on the business profile. So you would answer no to this question and later you would add in your service areas. Your business will still appear on Google Maps, but it won't display an address or or driving directions. Instead, the area you service will be highlighted on the map. 
If you checked yes, you'll be asked to enter the complete official street address for your business. This is also where you should be able to receive mail. And remember, a PO box cannot be used. For those who visit customers in a service area, like a plumber, for example, you'll need to specify your service area by city, postal code, or other areas. Also, if your business has a physical address, but also delivers goods and services to customers, like a flower shop, after entering the business address, you'll have the option to add additional service areas. When you're done, click Next to go to the next step. Next, you'll be prompted to enter your phone number or your website URL. Providing current info will help customers get in touch and learn more about your business. If you don't have a website and would like to create a very simplistic one through Google My Business for free, you can check the box, get a free website based on your info. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Once you finish your registration, you'll have that option to build a very free basic website that pulls the information from your Google business profile. When you're done, click next to go to the next step. Then you'll click finish in order to move ahead to the verification screen. Google wants to confirm that you are the true business or organizational representative. So you need to enter the verification process to confirm the business location and your authorization to manage the profile. Most of you will see the option to verify by mail and some folks get the option to get a text message or a phone call. If you're ready to start the verification process, click mail. If your business isn't yet open or you want to wait to start the process, click later. When you click mail, a postcard from Google is sent your way. It should arrive within five to 14 days. There will be a code on the postcard that you will enter into Google to verify that you are in fact the business owner, authorized to manage this information. If anyone else at your location checks the mail, like a family member or a receptionist, be sure that they know to be on the lookout for the postcard for you. Now let's take a look inside Google My Business to see what you can do. We'll start with a quick 30 second video, an example of a small business in New York and how they use their business profile to communicate with customers about how they were changing their policies during the COVID-19 pandemic. We opened Celsius with the idea to create a laundromat that people actually wanted to hang out in. When New York issued its stay-at-home order, we quickly shifted to drop-offs only. We switched to online booking through our Google profile, setting aside priority times for essential workers. We love our community and just wanted to help in any way we could. So that book online button is just one of the many features of the Google business profile that we're going to dig into. So this image is the Google My Business dashboard home tab as viewed on a desktop computer. You'd access it by going to google.com slash business. On this slide, we have the info tab highlighted in blue. That's where you'll update most of your public facing business information. Let's start with the business name and category. This is where you can confirm your business name and primary and additional categories. If you want to update your category or add additional categories, this is where you would do that. You can add up to 10 categories with the first category being the primary one. As I mentioned before, it's okay if you can't find the perfect category, just choose something close. You can get more specific when you fill out your business details within this section. The next section within the info tab is your address and or service area the geographic range where you will visit or deliver to your customers, which we touched on earlier. If your business serves customers within a specific service area, you can list that service area on your business profile. This tells customers where you will go to visit or deliver to them. You can add up to 20 service areas and you can specify them by city, 
postal code, or other areas. Keep in mind the following. If you don't serve customers at your business address and your office is in your home, or you want to hide your address, leave that address field blank and only enter in a service area. This will remove the pin from the map section and create a shading area on the areas that you serve. If you do serve customers at your business address, but you also have a service area, for example, if you're a retailer who sells to customers in store and also delivers, you can enter both an address and a service area. The next section in the info tab is your hours of operation. This is the most important thing, I think, in the Google Business Profile. It's important to make sure you keep your hours up to date, especially in the pandemic, when many businesses have limited hours, because 40% of people searching for local businesses are looking for their hours of operation. And if your business has special hours throughout the year, like extended hours for holidays or closures, you can specify particular dates in advance. You can also specify hours of operation for services like delivery, takeout, or drive-through, or special senior hours under more hours. On this slide, you can see how this option pops up and allows you to select various services and set those hours. Note that this option for more hours doesn't display until you first set your regular hours. After you update your more hours section, Customers who visit your business profile will find a message that confirms you made this recent update. Also in the info section, as shown on this slide, you have the option to add up to three business phone numbers, as well as your website URL. This makes it easy for people viewing your profile to click and call instantly, especially when they're viewing your profile from a mobile device. Another way to help your profile stand out is by adding attributes. Attributes are optional details about your business that you can choose to highlight on your business profile. Some examples of new attributes are identifies as veteran-led or women-led, black-owned, what payment types are accepted, whether gift wrapping is available, if the location is wheelchair accessible, and much more. There isn't a native-owned attribute yet, but I'm crossing my fingers. You will also notice a section called health and safety. Examples include masks required, temperature checked, appointment required, and safety dividers at checkout. The attributes you select may be visually highlighted in search results, helping your business stand out even more. Check back regularly to see if additional attributes are available for your profile, since they add them all the time. Next, you'll write a brief description of your business, up to 750 characters. This should be an introduction to your business that tells the consumer what they most need to know about you. Review this section periodically and make sure you update it with any major changes in your business. In most cases, only the first sentence or two will be displayed in the search results. A searcher can click to read the full description, so put the most important information first. If your business hasn't yet opened, you can add a future open date, up to one year in the future. Just choose the Verify Later option when you're prompted to verify your business. You only need to set the year and the month of opening, not the specific date. Once you've entered the date and verified your business, your business profile will appear on Google 90 days prior to opening. If your business offers in-home, educational, or professional services, you have the option to allow customers to make appointments through Google by adding appointment links. This is also in the Info tab. If you already have a booking system set up on your website through a third-party platform like MindBody or Appointee, it's as simple as adding the URL here. Once published, customers can see the link directly in your business profile. You can choose a preferred link to display at the top of your profile by clicking the star next to the appointment field. This option is only available for action-oriented links like an appointment, order, or reservation, not informational links like a menu or a COVID-19 update or a service link. 
Let's move on from the Info tab to some of the other available tabs. You may see the Bookings tab in the left navigation if your business is in an eligible category, such as health, beauty, and professional services. With this option, you can connect a third-party online booking provider with your business profile as part of a service called Reserve with Google. You can learn more about it and participating providers by clicking the Bookings tab or by visiting google.com slash maps slash reserve. The Posts tab highlighted on this slide is a feature you can use to provide live updates directly on your business profile. This is especially useful to update your customers during the COVID-19 pandemic, either by announcing closures or new hours or telling customers how they can help your business during these challenging times. Posts also allow you to communicate news, provide an offer, add an event, and more. Posts appear within the body of your business profile on search and maps. A post includes texts up to 1500 characters, one or more images up to 10, or video, 30 seconds or less, and a link to where you wanna drive traffic. There are a variety of different types of posts available depending on your business category. On this slide, you can see what it will look like when you create a COVID-19 support post. You can let customers buy gift cards from you or make a donation to your business directly from the business profile. Eligible businesses can create two types of posts with the support links featured in Google My Business. This feature lets you add a short message and a link to your gift card or donation page. As I mentioned, the types of posts available to you depend on your business category. This slide shows some of the types of posts as seen on a mobile device, including business updates, featured products, special offers, and events. Next, we have the photo tab. By adding business photos, you can help your business profile stand out on Google. In addition to adding photos, you can add videos up to 30 seconds to your business profile. Photos can tell customers more about your business. You can use photos to show how a product is made, packaged or shipped, give a tour of your space, highlight an employee, or show an unboxing of a new product or merchandise. The photos on this slide are from the Google business profile of a business in my region called Trickster Company. They show both the products that they offer and the interior of their store. They're well lit and clear. Next up is the products tab where you can showcase your products, a feature available to businesses that typically offer products. This slide shows an example of how you add products using the Google My Business dashboard by adding the product name, category, description and price, as well as a photo. If your business is in a service-oriented category, you'll have the option of setting up services that apply to your business by clicking on the Services tab in your dashboard. On this slide, you can see how you edit service details from the dashboard by entering the price and description up to 300 words, and then you'd hit Save. As I mentioned earlier, Google My Business includes the option to create a free, simple website, which is generated with the information from your Google Business Profile. This is a great starting point for, to being online. It's perfect for small businesses who don't yet have a web presence and aren't quite comfortable yet with creating their own website. Creating a website with Google My Business takes about five minutes, and there are three steps. Click Website from your Google My Business dashboard. Google My Business will then pull the info from your profile to generate the website. You have the option to customize some elements of the site, including the colors, the text, and photos. When you're ready to go live, you click Publish. These websites also come with a free URL. It would be yourbusinessname.business.site. Alternatively, you can register your own domain name like penniesbusiness.com. This option is not free, but it's usually not very expensive. And if you've already registered a domain name, you can use it for your new Google site and use the redirect option. 
On this slide, you can see an example of a free website created from the information added to the business profile. Your business profile is where your Google reviews can be found. When a customer writes a review of your business on Google, you'll be notified via email or the Google My Business app on your phone. It's important if you can to respond to all reviews and say thank you. It shows customers that you're attentive and you listen to customer feedback. What about negative reviews? Google won't remove a review unless it violates a content policy. Instead, Google encourages businesses to respond. Responses might explain a company policy or apologize that they had a negative experience. This slide shows the Messages tab, which allows you to chat directly with customers from the Google My Business app. This feature allows you to connect with your customers in real time. To turn on messaging, sign into your Google My Business app and click the Customers tab. The Message feature is at the top of the screen. You'll be prompted to set up an automated welcome message that customers will get when they message you. When they do message you, it will appear in the Google My Business app on your phone or your iPad. You must manage and answer your messages through the mobile app. You'll be notified when you receive a message. Responding to your customers' messages can help you answer their questions, tell your business story, and attract more people to your location. But if you don't respond to messages within 24 hours, Google might deactivate the messaging feature for you. One of the last tabs we'll look at today is the Users tab. The Users tab allows the business profile owner to invite others to co-manage a business profile. So you can invite coworkers to help you respond to reviews, add photos, edit hours, and more. To add a, another user, you would click Users from the left side navigation. Then you would add the email address of the folks you want to invite. As the primary owner, you can revoke access to the business profile or transfer ownership if you sell the business or no longer work there. The last tab I want to show you is the Insights tab. This feature gives you valuable information and data about how people are using your Google business profile. Insights will show you how people found your business profile. All the reports available can be broken down by week, month, or quarter. The reports focus on how customers use search and maps to find your profile and what they did once they found it. There are a lot of reports available in the Insights tab, including search queries, which focuses on the terms that customers typed into Google to find your business on local search and maps. This does not mean they clicked on your business profile, but that your profile appeared with that search term. You can also look at where customers view your business on Google. If they found your profile on search or maps, customer actions, what searchers did once they found your profile. Did they visit your website, request directions, call you or message you. You can also see what zip codes people are coming from to get directions to your location and when and how often searchers are calling your business from your Google business profile. You can view trends by day of the week or time of day to see your busy periods. And photos, the number of photos associated with your profile and how often they're viewed compared to photos of businesses similar to yours. So what's next? I hope that your next step is to create a Google business profile. Follow the steps I outlined in the first part of today's presentation. You learned a lot about business profiles today. Here are your next steps. Schedule time to update your Google business profile on a regular basis and respond to customer reviews. Make it a habit and update the information every time you make changes to your business. Add photos, videos, and posts as often as you can. And learn how customers engage with your profile on search and maps through the Insights tool. Finally, I'm going to introduce you to some additional tools that are available. If you want to sharpen your business and marketing skills, check out Primer. This is a free app you can download to your phone, and it's made by Google. It has a series of short, 
fun lessons that are all less than five minutes each. This image shows how Primer looks on a mobile app. Another great resource is the Google Quick Help videos. Get answers and learn how to make the most of Google tools in just a few minutes. You'll learn things like how to get your business listed on Google Search and Maps if you forget some of the information in our presentation today, how to create a YouTube channel for your business, and how to start a Google Meet video conference. Check out the information at g.co slash grow slash quick help. Lastly, Grow with Google is an initiative to help people prepare for work, find jobs, and grow their business. There are tons of tools and webinars to help job seekers, teachers, small business owners, startups, and web developers. To learn more and view webinars, visit google.com slash grow. Gunal Chish, thank you for watching this webinar on Google Business Profiles. It was an honor to spend this time with you, and I hope you learned some valuable information that can help your business or organization grow. Until next time.